Hello, and welcome to the show, Writing in the Tiny House. The entire point of this podcast is to help the tormented artist by sharing what I know about writing, publishing, and stress management so that you can have the tools to produce the content that you have been eager to write. If you have the steps in place, you can produce a short story in as few as three months or a novel in as few as 18 months. And hopefully through the ideas in this podcast, you will have the wisdom to adjust that timeline if you need to. I am Devin Davis, the guy who lives and writes in a tiny house in Northern Utah. Thank you for tuning in and please enjoy today's episode of Writing in the Tiny House. Hello and welcome to the show. Welcome to Writing in the Tiny House. Happy Wednesday. Here we are and it is officially Preptober, even though on this show we kind of jumped the gun last week a little bit with that. But if you don't know what Preptober is, this is the month where we take all of the things and we prepare to draft 50,000 words in November. So Preptober is when we start laying down the foundational stuff and gathering the tools that we are going to be referencing while drafting. Preptober is the time where we do our map of our city or land or whatever, the map of our setting. It's when we start doing our character maps or our character profiles. I'm going to be using both of those terms throughout this podcast episode. And we do our outline And we make sure that some other stuff are in place too if we are going to be doing a really big drafting push like we are all planning on doing in November for the National Novel Writing Month or NaNoWriMo. If you have not signed up for NaNoWriMo yet, be sure to do so and you can become my friend and we can follow each other and we can give each other accolades and encouragement as we go through this really big push of drafting. It's when the entire world, I mean, NaNoWriMo, I'm sure, is largely North American, but there are plenty of people all around the world who join in and participate. It's about drafting 50,000 words. Some people consider that a novel. I personally don't. But regardless, 50,000 words in a month is a very big step forward. So last week, we talked about a map of your setting, whether it's a city, whether it's a big world, whether it's a land, whether it's a, I mean, my goodness, friends, it can be a galaxy, it can be a space map, if you're doing something along those lines. And I talked about how that has helped me a lot in in just figuring out the introduction to this next draft of tis that I'm going to be working on for NaNoWriMo and it just helps make the place even more vivid and more real. It is easier for me to envision and describe if I already have a sense of space about how the city or the land is laid out. Today we are going to be talking about character maps. So right away, let's talk about two different types of characters. I mean, there's plenty of characters. We can talk about main characters and supporting characters and a lot of different things like that. We are mostly today going to talk about round characters and flat characters. And let's get the flat characters over and done with just because there isn't as much to discuss there. The flat characters are the people in the story who are still important, but if they went missing, nobody would care. Or if they were never a part of the story, the story itself wouldn't change. The flat characters usually don't have a super developed backstory. They may not have the most interesting physical description. A flat character doesn't have the depth to make them as relatable as the more main characters should have, and the round characters are your main characters. So that is what we are doing today, is we are talking about some different methods or different things to consider to flesh out the round characters of your draft, or the main characters, because that's what they are. So what we start out with 
with something like that. Well, we don't have we you can start anywhere, but I am going to break this down into three major areas of a person or a person's being. And we'll talk about each of these in depth. So the first is their physical appearance. This can be simply how they look, the clothes they wear, and the mannerisms that they present. The next is their backstory. For a main character, a person needs to have a history. There needs to be something about them. To have a main character just show up and to know nothing about them is hard to do, especially if you are writing a novel and you are hoping to make that character be relatable. So that is what the backstory is all about. And then the third part is the psychology. So this can be, I mean, that ties, that ties into physical appearance if you're talking about mannerisms, but it can be the way that they talk to each other or the way that they talk to members in the group that they're in, the way they speak to the main character, the way they speak to somebody who has authority over them versus less authority than they do, the way that they speak to members of their same gender or members of another gender, the way they speak to or treat some of the other marginalized groups of people if that is something that you are exploring in your writing. And so let's get in to some of those things. I'm just going to just rattle off things to consider. This list is not comprehensive by any means. I'm not going to pretend to have all of the answers in this list, but there are some things definitely to pay attention to. So let's look at the first group first, the first I mentioned, which is physical appearance. So some of the basics include their name, their age, their place of birth, their presenting gender or their gender identity, their nationality, education, occupation, income, things like that. And there's probably more. Those things kind of need to add up. They need to support one another. And if they don't, if there is something in that list that is weird or out of place. For instance, if there is a man living on the street and appears to be homeless, and yet we discover in the writing that he has $5 million in the bank or whatever, there gets to be a very good explanation as to why. So some other things about physical appearance can be eye color, hairstyle, build. If a person is a fighter, they will likely be built differently from somebody who is a scholar or somebody who runs a runs a tavern or whatever. Are, do they appear disheveled? Do they appear smart and tidy and put together? Do they seem untidy? Do they seem unkempt? Are there any chronic illnesses that or not chronic illnesses that affect their physical appearance? Are there sores? Is there a limp? Is there discomfort in their back and joints? If we're just coming back from like a battle, are there wounds? Are there bruises? Are there broken bones? And different things like that. If a person has a limp and they use a cane, and yet you are describing in their book that the whole group that they're in is doing a lot of traveling, that gets to be explained how it's happening for that character. A person who uses a cane and relies on a cane may not be as capable of traveling by foot as far as a group of people who don't use a cane. And so there would need to be explanation for that in order to make it believable. So another thing can be simply how they walk or their posture. Are they confident? Do they have powerful strides? Are they lazy? Are they timid? And just some of the things that go along with that. If they're timid, they may have shorter steps. They may have slouchy shoulders. They may look to the ground when somebody is talking to them. Speech and communication. Do they have an accent? Do they use slang? Do they use proper terminology? Some different stuff like that. Do they gesture? When they're agitated or eager, are they a hand talker or are they a hand ringer? 
when they are worried? Do they have a catchphrase? Do they have speech impediments? Do they have a preferred curse word? <laughs> Different things like that. Are there any ticks? Do they have a hand twitch or do they tap their thumb on their thigh or do they twirl a lock of hair around their finger? Do they bite their bottom lip? How does their smile look? Just some ways to describe a person's physical appearance. Do they have resting bitch face? <laughs> Are they an angel? Are they neutral? Are they chaotic bad? All of those different things. These are ways to describe somebody's physical appearance, and I'm not going to say that this list is comprehensive. So let's move on to the backstory, because it is usually the backstory that brings dimension to a character and makes them relatable. If you can bring a good solid backstory, it can be easier for you to describe their actions and their appearance and their mannerisms, and it can be easier for the reader to build an emotional connection to what you are doing with this character. And a lot of that is simply based on what this person has gone through that may or may not be directly described in your book. And the thing is, all of the round characters, all of the main characters should have some form of a backstory, even if you're not going to include it in your book. It's important to know that because it'll be easier for you to include those little things, the little tidbits that will draw the reader in and make the character more relatable. So let's talk about just some things to include or to think about in a character's backstory. I talked about maybe hometown and what the political climate is in a person's hometown, their education, is this person gay or straight or an ally? Is there some form of hardship at home or was there when they were little and now they still have scars from that or they have learned and grown from that? Is there drama? What is their occupation? What would their resume look like if resumes existed or if you teleported them here to our time and place and we're trying to get them a job? Hobbies, earliest memories, saddest memories, happiest times, clearest times, skeletons in the closet. Are there any acts or deeds that they are particularly proud of that happened in their lifetime or that they are particularly ashamed of and are trying to cover up? Criminal records. Another thing that ties into background can be family dynamics, which can be a political thing. Family dynamic can lead to a political stance. A family dynamic can also be affected in very different ways from political changes. If this is a character who lives at the palace and is part of the royal court, and a certain law is passed that affects fishermen, the person at court may not be as affected as the family whose parent supports the family by being a fisherman. What does the mom do? What's the mom like? Siblings? How many? What's the dynamic with the siblings? Was there an older brother who beat them up when they were little? Was there an older sister who dressed them up when they were little? Do they have children now, if that applies to your story? Let's see, external relationships, like friendships, significant friends, significant enemies. How do they act around strangers, authority figures, children, members of the opposite sex, extended family, if you are including things like that in your book? It seems to me, for some reason, that with adventure novels, particularly with fantasy novels, a lot of the characters tend to not have a family. Their parents are either deceased or estranged, and they're like an only child. And if you're doing that, that's fine. Just make sure to do that in a smart way. If you are doing something contemporary, what type of social media platforms is your character on and how would they interact with those social media platforms? Would your character be a girl who was always on TikTok versus like somebody my age who's always on? What is their role in the group dynamic? Are they leaders? Are they followers? Are they the mooch? Who do they depend on for practical advice, mentoring, food, perhaps, moral support, first aid. I mean, 
We talk about these groups of people going out in a super underdeveloped world to go on an adventure, but we rarely include first aid, and I feel that's important. Next, and just to end the episode, let's talk about the psychology, the thought process that a person goes through in order for them to make decisions and in order for them to develop habits. So things like, are they street smart or are they book smart or are they somehow both? Because it is possible to be both. Are they good with people? Are they not? extroverted, introverted, what's their favorite sound, favorite place in the world, what are their secrets, what do they want most, what would be a character flaw, and what would be a character strength, just as far as like their personality, biggest fear, biggest weakness, biggest accomplishment, what are they remembered for, and how would they approach ideas like power, ambition, love, and change? What bores them? What makes them angry? What do they look for in a person? Or what do they look for in a partner? If they won the lottery, how would they spend it? The list goes on and on and on. But even though this is a long list, there are some things that we absolutely need to nail down here. What is the person's goal? Why are they in the story? And what is their goal in the story? Just because having that goal motivates all of their actions as they interact with the plot, as they pertain to the plot. And so somebody who is out for money is not going to give money unnecessarily to somebody in the street. That would be very out of character and it would require some explanation. Or somebody who runs a charity is not going to suddenly develop a lot of like public angry selfishness. So that is a huge point is what is their goal in the story? What is their motivation? And just to wrap up this thing, it is important to know who your main character or characters are. If you're writing something like a romance, you will likely have two main characters. If you're writing something like an adventure novel, you will likely have several main characters, especially if you have several different subplots. But one of those is going to be the main plot, and usually it is one person who stands above the rest with the main plot. So with your character templates, it is important to know how they interact with the main character. Is it abrasive? Is it generous? Is it honest? Is it filled with deceit? Is it misleading? All of those different things. So even though this list is very long, I actually didn't read every item on my list. It is something to pay attention to. So once you have all of that figured out, what do you do? I highly recommend writing it down. Highly recommend. And it doesn't have to be like a five page essay on each of your characters' backstories. It doesn't have to be that. It just has to be enough for you to understand the character and for you to understand them better. And so if it is a list of bullet points, then have it be that. But I I highly recommend writing them down, especially for your group of main characters. And then maybe for some of your sub characters, for your non main characters, your characters in the background, you can have something like this if you want to, but it's not as necessary for the flat characters. And I actually have a notebook when I am writing a thing and that notebook has my outline and it has notes on the characters themselves. And if I have a map printed out, that will be stuck in my notebook as well, just because referencing those things is important. And as I start drafting and as I make some progress, I also take notes while I go just because sometimes something changes and because something changes in the prose or in the story structure itself and I don't have interest while I am in draft mode to go back and make that change. So I just carry on as if I already made that change and then take note whereabouts it should be in my notebook. And then I go back and revisit that when I'm doing revisions. So that's it for character maps. Be sure to do it. Be sure to do that for all of the round characters in your story. And definitely understand some of those things for the flat characters too. 
but it just makes drafting easier if you have all of that done. And then you will be even more ready for when you tackle your draft during NaNoWriMo on November 1st. Thank you for tuning in, guys. And that is it for today. Go ahead and follow me on social media. On Instagram, I am at Author Devin Davis. On Twitter, I am at Author Devin D. And I also have an account on TikTok. Go ahead and find my information in the show notes of this episode. And remember that my short story Brigitte, which was published last fall, is available on Amazon as an ebook and on Audible as an audiobook. Go ahead and check those things out today. And be sure to join me on next week's episode of Writing in the Tiny House. Run by copy editor Chrissy Barton. Little Syllables Editing is a reliable resource for anyone looking to improve their manuscript. Chrissy does line edits, copy edits, and the final proofread for experienced writers and newbies alike. Go to littlesyllables.com and reach out to Chrissy today. A link is in the show notes.